Hello and welcome to another episode of Cooking with Alkali. Here's your host, Alkali Bismuth. I'm your hostess with the mostess. Also I ate a cupcake. It was amazing. Today we're going to try the show a little bit differently. Uh, we reached out to one of our all-time biggest fans, uh, Tobe Otter. Thank you so much for your submission this week. This week we're going to make what Tobe wanted. Now my instructions to him were... I don't want your grandmother's recipe because I will screw that up and your grandmother will haunt me and this house is already haunted. I don't need that. Again. I also said don't give me something along the lines of dessert. Mm -hmm. I have also cooked like that before, as you can tell from the side view. <laughs> so Tobe came up with stuffed burgers. So this week we are going to attempt stuffed burgers and I think I have three methods that might work. So please today join me on a test to see how to make the best stuffed burger. We're gonna keep these very simple, all ingredients that I found today at the store. So these are your COVID-19 stuffed oh, no. hamburgers. <laughs> We're gonna start them the same way we start any burger. I've got three pounds of raw meat to three pounds of ground beef. It's gonna be nice and simple. We're going to add one teaspoon of fresh clack, cra clack. fresh clacked, just clapper, all the clapper, fresh cracked ground pepper. Okay. One teaspoon of garlic uh, uh, powder, half a teaspoon of onion powder, and half a teaspoon of salt. I usually use a coarse uh, kosher salt. We're putting that in there, and then we're gonna get down and dirty. Oh yes, use your freshly washed hands. What, much easier now. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, uh, it is way easier. I've learned the proper method for washing my hands. That That's is, it. stand at the bathroom sink for at least 30 seconds while crying over the state of our country. That's the perfect, it gets the soap off, the tears. And also recite the uh... Song of your choice. Don't forget to do that. Yeah, I stopped doing that ever mm. since the uh, cleaning lady caught me in the bathroom at work. Oh, no. Uh, I don't think she knew that the proper method for washing your hands was to sing happy birthday, so instead, a cleaning lady walked in to find a sad fat man singing to himself, and then after a bit realized it was happy birthday, she yeah, looked at me and I, like, oh... Happy birthday? And I didn't have the heart to tell her it wasn't my birthday, so I'm like, yeah, and then just walked away. <laughs> as long as it made her stay six feet away, that's good. She definitely stayed six feet away. That's how everyone acts on my birthday. That's right. All right, so we're almost there. We're just trying to get all these spices in. Now here's what we're going to do. I've decided the method we're going to stuff these with is we are going to create half pound baddies. So we should be able to get uh, eight half pound baddies out of this three pound Three, six, six half pound patties out of this three pound. Twelve half pound patties out of these three pounds of meat. Twelve quarter pound pet. We're gonna redo this part. Stupid! You're so stupid! All right, so let me start that over again. <laughs> we are gonna make quarter pound patties out of these three pounds of meat. We are going to make 12 quarter pound patties. Using those quarter pound patties, we are going to turn them into half pound patties with the cheese in the middle, our stuffed patties. Mm. So once again, we are going to make 12 quarter pound patties and then use those to make our stuffed burgers. So all I did was I took one of the kitchen scale that I definitely do not use to measure drugs. If there is one thing I hate more than the mafia, it is a liar. I wish the mafia would go out and kill all the liars and bury them in my yard. And I wouldn't tell the cops a thing. Not that I would be lying per se, but I would just get really quiet all of a sudden. All right, uh, grams wise, if you have a scale, it's easier to do grams than anything else. So you're just trying to make 113 grams. One, one, three, 113 grams is about a quarter of a pound. Now all I'm gonna do is put that on there and I am going to take a little while and make us a bunch of 113 gram patties. So why don't we either time lapse or come back? I recommend uh, time lapse because I'm a crazy person and they will be exact. 
Time lapse once. See you in a moment. three times since the last break. So, I've tried stuffed burgers before. I'm not going into this one totally blind, and one of the problems that I ran into was them falling apart. Sometimes I would put too much cheese in them. Sometimes I was just making a cheese sandwich that happened to use a little bit of ground beef. Sometimes I just eat the cheese. Dream of better times. Hmm. <laughs> the before times. But... So here's how we're going to do this one. To increase the stability of our meat patties, we're using two two quarter pound patties, putting the cheese in between. Now Xander, come on in here. Okay. What I did is I took blocks of cheese, those are the ones that you find all over the place at any uh, convenience store, mm -hmm. and we cut them into strips about this big. After that, we went meh, meh, there. Those are cubes, see? And then they went like this, a lot. Oh my God, I ate so much of this cheese. <laughs> And by using that, I built uh, little pyramids of cheese because we do want the middle a little bit more full than the exterior. Uh, that's gonna give us a nice gooey cross section. Uh, and uh, we're furries, we all like gooey. So we're gonna take one of our balls of meat and then we're gonna do what the football players do and alcoholics and spike it. You don't actually need to do that. I just felt like throwing meat, to be honest with you. I mean, uh, the two cheeses we are using right here is a sharp cheddar because I love sharp cheddar. And I forgot the other one that Mouse had me buy. Pepper Jack. It's a Pepper Jack cheese. To be fair, how often do you get to throw meat? I mean, it's fair. <laughs> so we're going to take one of our patties, put the three pieces of cheese, press them into the middle, one extra one on top. Take another meat patty. Squish this one down in our hands this time. Lay it down right on top. Oh and boy. crush this whole thing together. Now this is a large meat patty. We're trying to seal it off so that the cheese doesn't get out when we cook these things. Now if you didn't notice, the one place that I didn't say we were going to be uh, attempting these as the grill. Now, why didn't I do that? Because I tried these on the grill once before and I kind of destroyed the thing. So we're not doing that this time. Mm. We are going to try three different methods, none of which involves the grill, maybe. So this one is sealed off. This one is done. There we go. We have our first patty. Now I'm going to keep making these. It's going to come out with a total of eight burgers, uh, four pepper jack, four sharp cheddar, and we're going to put them back in the fridge. Once again, we're putting them back in the fridge to increase stability. So we're going to make the patties, cover them up, put them in the fridge, and right before we're ready to cook, we're going to take them out. That will help them not fall apart. The three methods we're going to use is uh, one, directly on a tray in the oven. However, we're going to put a, uh, a grating that we use for holding cookies so that the grease strips through. One of the things I want to try is seeing if we raise them up just a little bit, if the grease can fall out and we get a nice, uh, 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 firmer textured burger. The other one will be completed on the stove top right here. We're going to use a flat iron instead of the grill outside. This gives me more control over temperature and also won't destroy my grill. And the third one, 
We're going to take some of these burgers and we're going to see what happens if we put them through a sous vide. Hmm. We're going to heat them up to an exact temperature, to a medium well status. We're going to take them out and we're going to flash them at a super high temperature right here on the flat iron. So those are the three methods we're going to use. Let's see which one of those works the best. All right, we're back. So because I'm doing this in three different ways, ways once again, one in the sous vide, one in the oven, and one right on the uh, flat top, these are all going to be a different time. So I just want to show you one of the preps. Uh, I don't know how many people have access to this. However, I cannot recommend it enough. I don't know how to work for burgers, but we're going to show you the sous vide prep work. All right, let me get this out. Now, to do the sous vide prep, we're going to need our seasoning. We're making it nice and simple. That's going to be one teaspoon of kosher salt. And go ahead and overfill all these. We're just trying to get this to rub onto the burgers. Uh, I grabbed the wrong one. Hmm. Uh, we're going to get a little bit of a garlicky burger. So one tablespoon of the following, one tablespoon of garlic powder, one tablespoon of Lori's seasoning salt, and a teaspoon of onion powder. Now that's the base that I use on almost all of my burgers. This is a super simple seasoning. And you know what, it just gives a uh, burger done in a flat iron a little extra kick. Mm -hmm. Now, once again, I've never done burgers in a sous vide before, so I'm going to season these very lightly. Very lightly. All right, Xander, come on in here. Okay. These are the burger patties we made. Mm -hmm. As you can see, I put a yellow toothpick in one, showing me that this side is the cheddar, this side is the uh, pepper jack. This is a sous vide bag. I get them in giant tubes because uh, ferrets love tubes. <laughs> so the entire setup I have, I think, cost me around $100. All it is is a vacuum sealer, a, two rolls of these bags, and the sous vide unit, which is behind me. Nice. So I sealed one side of this bag. We're going to take two of the Monterey Jack. So we're doing uh, three burgers in the sous vide, three burgers on the in the oven, and two burgers on the stove top. That is too many burgers. Stop it! And the bags are not big enough for two. The sous vide is only getting two burgers. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> All right, we're back. I just took all of the burger patties out of the fridge. Now, once again, you want to work with these quickly when they're cold. And you will be doing three different methods. We have our burgers in the sous vide. They've been in there for about 20 minutes. They need 10 minutes more. Now we're going to get the oven burgers prepped. Now, this is going to be a little bit counterintuitive. Normally, when working with something like a steak, you would heat it up in the sous vide in the oven, then you'd finish it off in the pan to get that sear. Well, since these are burgers, that would fall apart. So what we're going to do is the exact opposite of what you think. We're going to sear them first and then put them into the oven. So we have our spice mixture that we made. We're going to sprinkle just enough so that you can kind of see it. That's what we're looking for. That's a bit much. That burger is going to be salty. And then, all right. There are our burger patties. Now, two of them, these two in the middle, are going to be done separately on the flat iron. These are what we're searing. So, here we go right on to a searing hot flat iron. Mm -hmm. and all we need here is a sear. So we're only doing about two minutes per side, two to three minutes. Nice. We'll flip them in a little bit and see how they are. Mm -hmm. Now those, I see the timer. Those, you're going to leave them alone, let them sit and sear, and the moment they're done, you're going to put them onto a tray that is lined with something to keep them off of the grease. So, Xander, show this. Yep. I usually use cookie trays on a uh, tin foiled sheet pan. So, while these are cooking on one side, you can take your seasoning and gently season the other side of those burgers. As always, remember, if you're doing this indoors like I am, if you're using a flat iron like this, 
there is exposed flames underneath it. You will be filling some of your uh, cast iron with grease. If, like me, you're using one that doesn't have long sides, watch that grease. If it starts to get towards the edge, if it starts to blow over, you got to turn off the flame. Trust me, that's way too well done of a steak. Uh, it's about to get kind of loud in here, so we're going to cut the sound. Yep, I can see it. See it real good. A second. Mm -hmm. This is kind of what we're looking for. We just want that browning uh, to start. And then we're going to throw this in a 400 degree oven for 15 minutes. All right, we have uh, sous vide burgers that are going to be coming out in about uh, five minutes. We've got oven burgers coming out in about seven minutes. So now that we're at that point, our flat iron is still hot as hell. We're going to inside cook some burgers. Now bear in mind, no matter what you do, you're gonna get some smoke. I'm sure it looks a little smoky in here right now. The moment this video is over, I'm opening up all the windows, letting the neighbors smell my shame. So until then, once again, it's going to get loud. So we're gonna throw these on and then we're gonna cut away to a clip. I'm only doing two burgers at a time because once again, there's only two super hot spots on here. These things uh, move the heat around quite well, but I wanna use the hottest point on the pan. It's also my favorite sound in the world. <laughs> All right, everything should be done around the same time. Right now, the two griddle burgers are under this lid, because don't forget, those you need to cook to the full way through. And as always, my best tool, an electric thermometer. I know that these two are done, so they can come off. And I'm going to put them right on to paper towels because this was cooked in its own juices. There we go. So these are our two flat iron only burgers. Coming out of the oven. It's like a competition. We have our four oven baked burgers. Now, I need to check them for doneness. So I'm gonna take the fattest one, seems to be this one. Go in, try to make sure not to hit the cheese pocket that I put in the middle. Mm -hmm. and these are medium well, so these are done. Same thing off here. What was the temperature at? Oh, I'm sorry, the temperature on these is between 145, oh, around 145 is what you're looking for. Okay. 145 is medium well. These are all done. Okay, and... All right, ready to come right back with the sous vide. And our final one, the least appetizing looking of the bunch, the sous vide burgers. And they're the ones that are going to get a quick flash on the hot cast iron. So we're going to season them up. We're going to throw them down for just about two minutes per side. And we're going to get them some color. Let go. These are fully cooked burgers. They just have no color in them whatsoever because they haven't hit this hot grill. So that's gonna happen for the next two minutes. I'm gonna do that uncovered because I don't want them to cook anymore. And in a moment, we're gonna do our blind taste test. We'll see you guys in a bit. Superintendent, I hope you're ready for mouth-watering hamburgers. I thought we were having steamed clams. No, oh, no, I said steamed hams. All right, we're here with the taste test with Miko and Xander, guys. Thank you so much for your help. They are tasting our three methods of burger. Start with yellow. Oh, All yellow. Right. Okay. Yellow. Yellow. 
<laughs> you, you got oh, some well. cheddar. Don't <laughs> eat the, the toothpick. Please don't eat the toothpick. Eat don't the, eat the toothpick. don't stab yourself with the toothpick. Oh. The only thing on each of these burgers is raw onions, a bit of mustard, and a bit of ketchup, and uh, it's all over Xander's pants. That's pretty good. <laughs> that is pretty good. All right. So we've got yellow. Or oh, yellow. Moisture yellow level of yellow. Kind of dry? That one's a little bit drier. I, I guess so. I mean, it's a medium to me. Yeah, I, I mean, it is. It, it's a very medium burger. Because it's the mm-hmm. first one I had today. <laughs> okay. Next one is green. Okay. That is blue. Oh, is it? Yep. I this is good green. work, artist. Green. <laughs> That's green. Okay. All right. More cheddar. <laughs> That's like meatloaf. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I like the crisp on the outside on this one. It's very moist. Okay, yeah. so that one's super moist and like meatloaf. Yeah. It's uh, thick. <laughs> oh, it's really good. Like, but it does it taste is like very meatloaf-y. chewy. Yeah, yeah. So okay. green is like meatloaf. Green is meatloafy, blue. and finally, yeah. blue. Blue. This one I'm excited about. Mmm. Is there something different in here? Mmm. Mm mm. Mm, that was good. <laughs> All right. So what's different about this? One? The, that one is the this biggest is the difference, sous-vide, isn't it? Blue is sous vide. Yep. Yeah, really. Yeah. That is the sous vide. So is that your choice? It's very interesting. It t- it tastes so different. Yeah. 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 So t- in a good way. The so, the way that it formed, like these two are so thick because the only thing holding it together is being pressed together. The other ones are air air compressed, uh, mm. but also like pre cooked before they're thrown on that sear. Yeah. Okay. And uh, less grease. Actually, believe it or not, the, the sous vide would have less grease had cooked out in the bag. Uh, I had to dump a lot of uh, grease water into the, the <laughs> into the which bowl. Which I wouldn't believe because it is so fucking moist. Yep. No, it's it, that holds the moisture nicely. Well, all right. <laughs> oh, dude, this, these are still really good. This is like a different flavor mm-hmm. almost. This is like a different. Like, I could see someone is still preferring these if you... Oh, no, a- absolutely. Like, like this they, is like a different... I it, don't know. It, it's like, it's it's softer, it's way more moist, and mm-hmm. like, the texture is so much more pleasing. Mm-hmm. It's almost like a hamburg steak kind of thing. All right, well, sous vide burger. All right, so yeah. sous vide takes first place, and then uh, what else did we have? Meatloaf burger second for me. The yeah. meatloaf burger was what, the yellow or the green? Green, green. green was griddle. That is tri- uh, cooked in the traditional way in its own grease. With the cover, that keeps in the moisture, cooking it a little bit through the heat trapped underneath and a little bit through the grease on the griddle. Oh, wow. And oven burger takes last. Actually, yep. I'm kind of surprised on that one. No, I I agree. Yeah, the, the griddle burger is way better than the oven burger. The meatloaf right. burger is, is the second for you as well? It, it, it has... They're pretty much the same. The oven one and the griddle one. I'm gonna yeah. make a big old mess out of myself, but I think <laughs> the the crust on the outside of the griddle one is so much better. Okay. Yeah, that that would be yeah, because you can't over. You have to worry about overcooking it, going from griddle to oven. Mm-hmm. So there you have it. There's our blind taste test. Tobotter, thank you so much for your recommendation. This has actually been a very educational experience for me. I hope everyone enjoyed. Don't forget, click like and subscribe, and thank you so much for your patronage. If you enjoyed this, guys, there's a chance for you to put in your recipes as well. That's right. That's right. Give us recipes so mm-hmm. that I can eat more things. There's a link <laughs> down below. Small mouth. Small mouth. Small mouth. All right. Thanks for joining us, everyone, and good Bye-bye. night.